Latina, do you have any children in common with the defendant? Señora, ¿tiene usted hijos en común con el acusado? Sí, tenemos dos. Yes, we have two. Are there any other children living in the residence with you? Hay algunos otros menores que vivan en la casa con ustedes. Sí, dos niños más. Yes, two more children. And who do the children belong to? ¿Y de quién son esos niños? Son míos, pero él los ha criado como de él también. They are mine, but he has taken care of them as if they were his. <coughs> and who is the who is the breadwinner in your family? Señora, ¿y quién es la persona que gana el dinero en su familia? Mi pareja es el único que trabaja en la casa y es el proveedor para mis hijos y para mí. My partner, he is the only one that works, and he is the provider for me and my children. And just to be clear, did you want him to return home? Señora, y solo para que quede claro, ¿usted desea que él regrese a la casa? Sí, lo deseamos yo y mis hijos. Es algo... Yes. ¿Puedo seguir? That is what my children and I want. ¿Puedo no. continuar hablando? May I continue speaking? Yes. Okay. Sí. Uh, yo, uh, nuestra situación con él se salió de control. Nunca nos había pasado esto. Our situation got out of hand. It had never happened before. Yo a él no le temo. Él no es violento en la casa. Él no toma. Él es un hombre trabajador que ve por nuestros hijos y por mí. I don't fear him. He is not aggressive. He doesn't drink. He is a hard worker and he takes care of me and my children. Yo le pido que no nos separe a nuestra familia. Yo quisiera seguir conviviendo con él, que mis hijos sigan teniendo contacto con él, porque mis hijos y yo en realidad lo necesitamos con nosotros. I ask you to please don't separate us. Uh, we want him to keep living with us. My children and I need him. No further questions, Your Honor. Just argument. No tengo más preguntas, su señoría. All right, go ahead, counselor. Muy bien, proceda, licenciado. Your Honor, this just seems to be, a, unfortunately, a dispute that got a based on the police report, just a dispute that got out of control, and unfortunately the police were involved in this. They have four children, two of them in common, living in this home. He is the sole breadwinner of the, of the residence, and I believe maintaining a separate residence will be just too much of a economic hardship on both him and his family. We'd be asking for, He's on, since he's already on no hostile contact and he is on pretrial release that, and the victim has already stated that she has no issues against calling 911 in case something like this, heaven forbids, happens again. We'd be asking for him to be allowed to return to the residence so that they can continue living together as a family. Eh, bueno, esto parece ser que fue una discusión que se salió de control y la policía lamentablemente estuvo involucrada. Ellos tienen cuatro hijos, dos de ellos en común. Él es la única persona que trabaja en el hogar y que hace dinero. Así Y según el testimonio de ella, ella desea que él regrese. Como él ya se les ordenó, se le prohibió el contacto hostil entre ambos y se le concedió la libertad provisional. La víctima ha dicho que ella no tiene inconveniente alguno en llamar al 911 si algo llegase a suceder. Así que por lo tanto le pedimos que permita que él regrese a la residencia porque el que ellos tengan que vivir en residencias separadas sería una carga económica muy pesada para ambos. All right, thank you, counselor, and thank you, ma'am, for your testimony here this morning. Based on that testimony and the argument of counsel, I'm going to allow you to return back to the residence. So I'll strike that condition of pretrial release that he maintain a separate residence. 
Muy bien, gracias licenciado y gracias a usted señora, debido a su testimonio entonces le permitiré a él que regrese a la casa, así que por favor tachen la condición de la libertad provisional que prohibía la convivencia que prohibía la convivencia Ma'am, I still think it would be good for both of you if you were not living in the same home for a few days so that you had some time to cool off. But based on your testimony here, I'm going to allow him to return home. That does not mean, however, that you are allowed to have any hostile contact. You must still have only peaceful contact. Señora, de todas maneras, a pesar de que he permitido que él regrese al hogar, yo pienso que sería bueno que ustedes pasaran algunos días separados en lo que se enfría la situación. Sin embargo, la prohibición de contacto hostil entre ambos se mantiene vigente. All right, good luck, thank you. Muy bien, buena suerte, gracias. And Your Honor, I apologize, I didn't hear, um, is it... Is there a bond or is it ROR with pretrial release conditions? It's pretrial release conditions, no monetary bond. Okay, perfect. Y disculpa su señoría, no escuché bien. Él ha puesto, ha sido puesto en libertad por caución juratoria sin fianza o es acaso libertad provisional? Él está en libertad provisional. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Buena day. suerte, gracias. All right, so case number 2021-CT-65180 and 652-AO -O bonded. All right. Next, please tell me your name. Pedro Sanchez Garcia. Pedro Sanchez Garcia. Sir, you're here in 2021-CT-656-AO, charged with driving while license canceled, suspended, or revoked with knowledge. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find probable cause exists in this case. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond is $500. If you're able to bond out, sir, you're not allowed to drive without a valid driver's license. Do you understand? Yes, 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 I understand. All right, good luck, sir. Thank you. All right, thank you, Madam Interpreter. I believe that's all we need for your, with your assistance this morning. Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, call now? Uh, do you have? Right, next, okay. Yes, sir. He bought it on this case? Yes. Okay. Do I press talk or are yes. they already connected? Yeah. Good morning. Uh, good morning. This is Pablo Lara, Portuguese interpreter. Have you already been sworn this morning? Not yet, Your Honor. All right. Please raise your right hand to be sworn, Madam Clerk. Do you swear to translate from Portuguese to English, English to Portuguese, the testimony you will receive today? Yes, I do. Pablo Lara, Portuguese interpreter. All right, sir. You're over the loudspeaker. Please ask him to tell me his name. Por favor, diga o seu nome. Breno Gabriel Bernardo de Alencar. Bruno Gabriel Bernardo de Alencar. Good morning, sir. You're here in case number 2020-CT-7092-AO, 7092 charged with failure to appear on a no or expired driver's license more than six months. There was a capius issued. Uh, bom dia, senhor. Você está aqui para o caso 2020-CT-7092-AO e a acusação é que você é, não compareceu a uma audiência com relação a dirigir com carteira de habilitação expirada. I understand you posted bond in this case. However, you're being detained by immigration at this time. Ah, uh, eu entendo que você está tendo, dando prosseguimento a este caso, mas você está sendo detido pela imigração neste momento. So you won't be able to leave until the immigration hold is taken care of. 
você não poderá sair até que o, o bloqueio que está sendo feito pela imigração seja cumprido. Right, good luck, sir. Thank you. Okay. Boa sorte, senhor. Obrigado. Thank you, Mr. Interpreter. I believe that's all we have for you this morning. Thank you, Your Honor. Have, have a nice good day. Thank you. Can the interpreter hear me? Oh, uh, yes, the interpreter can hear you, Your Honor. Ah, good morning, sir. Um, good morning. I understand you're previously sworn. Did you say something to the uh, interpreter, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Have you previously been sworn? Oh, uh, yes, I have. Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Please ask him to tell me his name. Wendy uh, Nelson. Wendy Nelson. Pardon? And Your Honor, the uh, victim is present and is using the interpreter as well, so she's responding <laughs> to the question. Oh, ma'am, yes. one moment. I need to get his name first. Oh, Johnny. Madame Fontita, I'm going to talk to Monsieur Adabo. Okay. What's your name, sir? Wendy Nelson. Uh, Wendy Nelson. Good morning. You're here in case number 2021-CF-969-AO, charged with aggravated battery domestic violence. Ah, uh, là je dis à la dans le cas 969 et au donc il dit que où tu fais en attaque contre un monde dans la Kaila. In this case, I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find probable cause exists for your arrest. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Dans le cas ça, moi examiner lui, moi que j'ai une bonne raison pour être arrêté ou, m'a ba un avocat de la défense publique pour aider ou. Ma'am, please raise your right hand to be sworn. Madam, levez mes doigts pour vous faire sementer. Do you swear to tell the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth, have you got? Madam, est-ce que vous dites pour vous, est-ce que vous sementez pour dire la vérité, toute la vérité, et d'autre la vérité devant Dieu? Oui. Yes. Please state your name for the record. Dis-nous non pour nos cas. Dis-nous non pour nous. Repeat it for me. Marie Barrow. My name is Mary Marie Barrow. Does the state wish to inquire? I don't believe this. Is the, oh, sorry. Let that. One second, please. Uh, uh, Escalate that time and uh, pose a question. Oui, alors nous avons parlé avec juge dans vos que vous mettez une force accusation subitement. Thank you, Mama. Well, I'm here to uh, uh, talk in on behalf of my child because they have a false accusation against my child. I believe this is his mother and not the victim, Your Honor. So the state has no questions for the witness. All right. One second. One second. Does the defense have any questions for her? No questions, Your Honor. Est-ce que vous avez une question pour madame là? Non, je n'ai pas une question pour madame là. Mais on a besoin de 10 juges en bas de la tour. Tu as noté, maman. Je voudrais dire quelque chose à la juge aussi. Ok, juste un moment. Tu as noté, maman. Monsieur, vous avez un second case, 2021 MM 580 AO. J'ai aussi trouvé une probable cause qui existe dans ce cas. Monsieur, vous avez un autre cas aussi, 20 MM 
1-855-808-8508. Donc, moi-même, tout, moi, je veux que bon j'ai raison pour arrêter ou dans le All right, ma'am, what, what is it that you'd like to say to the court this morning? Uh, Madame, qui sont à aimer, dites tout le monde à la matière. Madame, petite mère, il est malade, il a un mental problème. Il te sent. Ok. Attends, uh, attends, dis-le pas ma seconde mère, ok? Mm -hmm. uh, what I would like to say is that my child is a sick child, he has a mental problem. He went to the he went to the hospital for behavior hospital on Sunday soir. He took some medication to relax the body, but prescription. He went to relax the prescription. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, uh, they uh, on Saturday they gave me a pretty prescription at a certain hospital for him. And as I was on my way to buy the uh, medication, because he was hospitalized for three days for for uh, one, 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 one second, Your Honor, uh, can you ask the witness to either speak in English or in Creole? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. One moment. Ma'am. Study, study, madam. One moment. We have a Creole interpreter here who's assisting the court to make sure that your testimony is clear. Please don't talk over me or the interpreter. All right, please don't talk over me or the interpreter. If you need the interpreter, please speak in Creole and then he will tell the judge what it is that you need me to hear. Okay, merci. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anything else you want the court to know about your son's medication Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. And when I called the police uh, uh, for him, I was on my way to get the medication uh, and to return with the medication. I had not even administered the medication to him yet, and he wanted, and he was starting to act up. Therefore, I called the police to have uh, him, them come and help me with him. All right, ma'am, that's not why he's here today. Madam, c'est pas pour raison ça, là, je veux dire. So at this time, let me ask the state. Does the state have an objection to pretrial release in this case? No, Your Honor, there's no contact with the victim. Maintain a separate residence. No weapons, no firearms, no drugs, no alcohol. On state, we request to tra take all medication as prescribed. Okay, the interpreter now. Madame, uh, est-ce que l'État a aucune objection pour nous la guéli uh, Je dis à la. Non, nous pas aucune objection. Mais c'est le bagage qu'on a demandé. Il n'y a pas de guéli aucun examen sur lui. Il doit prendre tous les médicaments. Il n'y a pas de guéli à faire des autres de yoa. Il n'y a pas de guéli aucun monde. Il n'y a pas de guéli aucun problème. Et laissez-moi dire, pour le traitement de la Is he, does he qualify for mental health pre-trial release or is this regular pre-trial release? Ma'am, please don't talk while I'm talking. Madam, s'il te plaît, pas parler pendant que moi-même m'a parlé. He will have to be screened to de be determined, but I'm thinking on that charge, he won't qualify. But you can still order uh, it to see if he can be screened for it. The interpreter, uh, est-ce que vous avez aucun bagage que vous pouvez faire pour lui en attendant? All right, I'd like him screen for mental health pre-trial release. Ma'am, please don't talk. Ma'am, please stop talking. Madam, madam, s'il te plaît, pas parler pendant la parler. Thank you. 
I'd like him screened for mental health pretrial release. I'm going to place him on pretrial release. Sir, you're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. You're not allowed to return to the scene of this incident. I'm ordering that you maintain a separate residence from the victim. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, a firearm or ammunition. I'm gonna order that you take all medications as prescribed by your doctor. Do you understand? Monsieur, merci ma bye. Ma ou pas doit get ma plague ou, mais on pas doit get aucun contact avec victime là. Ou pas doit rester dans aucun côté avec victime là. Ou doit aller habiter en l'autre côté en dehors de côté victime là hier. Ensuite, tout médicament que ba ou, ou doit prendre tout jusqu'à ce que nous retourner là. Vous comprenez ça monsieur? Yeah, but on va on va on va enterrer les polices, si tu veux t'arranger tout ba lui pour le sortir, moi crois qu'il est sorti. Uh, yes, but uh, prior to calling uh, the police, I think she had already set everything up for herself to leave the place. I think she has left the place already. Sir, I'm ordering that you maintain a separate residence. If she has left that residence, you're allowed to live there. But if she has not, you may not live there. I'll allow you one time Wait. return with law enforcement officer to gather your belongings. Monsieur, je dis que on pas de rester même côté avec victime là. Si que il quitter car là, il y a permettre qu'on rester dans car là, mais s'il rester dans car là ou même pour pouvoir chercher l'autre côté. En attendant, je permettre que pour aller avec la police, on seul fois seulement pour aller prendre toute affaire ou dans car là. OK, but car là est sous nom nié et qui monde qui appelle. Il va travailler. Well, uh, the house is in my name. Who's going to be uh, paying for the house if I'm not working? You are. If the house is in your name, this doesn't change anything about that. You're just not allowed to live there if she's living there. So you can talk to your attorney about any motions that she's going to file on your behalf. C'est vous même qui doit payer. Mais ce bagage n'a dû, si que madame n'a pété, si que vous n'avez été dans cas là, ou pas doit rester dans cas là. Parce que c'est vous même qui a payé. Maintenant, ça va demander pour faire, ou de parler avec avocat ou, ou s'il y a aucune motion que l'État a remis fait, and that's pre-trial release on both cases. Okay, let me clarify. You want mental health PTR first. If he doesn't qualify, then regular PTR. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, good luck, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Good luck. Bon chance. Bon chance, monsieur. Bon chance. Just a moment. Yes, ma'am. Oui, oui, madame. What's the last thing you problem in the head? It's me who is here to medical, to medical doctor. It's me who is going to take the baggage. He's going to do that because he wants to take the baggage. He's going to go to the hospital and take the baggage. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, uh, all the things that he's saying shows that he has a mental issue because I am the one who is taking care of him. I am the one who's going to take him to the hospital. And I, in fact, I was going to take him back to the hospital because I know there is a mental issue. Ma'am, ma you can do that. I, I've not ordered him to stay away from you. So you can have contact with your son. Madame, you can do that. I don't have to buy a lot to have contact with a little. You have to have contact with a little. You have to have to have to have to have Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Good luck, everyone. Good luck, everyone. Mr. Interpreter, I do still need your assistance for one more case. Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. But she needs to leave. Can you ask her to please leave? Mom is asking, mom is asking, will I be able to wait for him? Oh. I don't know. That's up to the jail. Ça, c'est des pas par la prison qui est écrit pour le bail ça. Bac, on est. Talk to the jail downstairs. Parlez avec les gens qui sont en prison. All right. Good luck. Quand est prison, il a des gens. Where is the jail? You're in the jail, ma'am. I don't know. Go back to where you came in. Allez, quand tu es entré. All right. Thank you. The next case, please tell me your name. Joseph Jean Louis Merisme. Joseph Jean Louis Merisme. All right, good morning, sir. You're here today in case number 2021 CT 653 AO, charged with driving under the influence with a prior conviction. 
entre M. Oula dans le cas 27 653 AO, où tu as conduit alors que tu es déjà arrêté ou pas parce que tu as conduit. I reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find there's probable cause in this case for your arrest. Moi examiné Kana Kasa, moi je ne qu'il y a bon genre raison pour arrêter. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Ma ba un avocat de la défense publique pour représenter. Your bond is $1000. If you're able to post your bond, you're not allowed to possess or consume any alcohol while out on bond and you're not allowed to drive. Do you understand? Ça bon que y a mettre soi c'est 1000 dollars et y a quitter aller si qu'on paye bon maintenant ou pas doué ni non plus gagner aucun alcool zou ni non plus ou pas doué conduit machine vous comprenez ça oui yes all right thank you good luck sir merci et bonne chance monsieur all right i think is that all the haitian creole we have this morning yes your honor thank you mr interpreter for your time thank you your honor have a good day you as well Wait, who? I don't have that. I have Jamie Ferrer next. Oh, I do have it. Just kidding. Hey, I'm I'm with you. This is case number 2020 MM897780 charged with trespass and dwelling after warning represented by the public defender's office yes your honor um we'll waive and enter a um, plea of not guilty all right and this is i don't know what docket this is on that's an arraignment where does it say 83 your honor your honor i need i need a 285 and a 915 oil diver you give me the 985 okay hold on sir i'm let me deal with this other case and then we'll address your case all right, so whenever the next court date is. Okay. It'll be, next court date will be February 3rd at 7.30 a.m. courtroom 6C. Hey, your, your Honor. Hold on one second, sir. Tell me your name, please. Uh, Jaime Ferrar. All right. Yeah, yeah I need a Ford Daver in a 289 Balak. You think you give me the Slater Slater? I got to come back with the coupon. Your Honor, I think he has some um, mental health um, issues. All right, counselor, this is case number 2021, MM548AO. Sir, you're charged with trespass on property after warning. Yeah. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. And I believe, counselor, that you might be correct about that. Yeah, I may, I may need a 202 pass, but I got to sign a 303. I got my, 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 I got my, uh, a uh, uh, third table. But I thought, two, the two, the two, give me the five billion dollars in about an hour. Yeah. And the okay. bailout will be about six eighty-five. All right. Well, in this case, sir, your bond is going to be five hundred dollars. Yeah. But I'm going to let you talk to your attorney about that. Yeah. Your all Honor, the, all the, we... the Slater Slater on it. Hold on one second, sir. Your let Honor, me hear from your attorney. Your Honor, can uh, we will be asking for an ROR or a mental health pretrial release because of the mental health issue? I don't think he qualifies. Does he qualify for mental health pretrial release? I'm not too sure, but you can have him screened for. All right. Let's have him screened for that. For, for the ROR, I'll do the three the three months, but the two the two the two eighty five go for about five eighty eight. All right. So sir. I, I bring you the stomach coupon and you valorate and you stay in, in, in slander for what you did in, in eighty nine on the two dagger. All right. Well, I wasn't on the bench in nineteen eighty nine, but if you do bond out, sir, you're not allowed to return to this place. Yeah, but I bring the warehouse copy in the six eighty eight. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. He's being screened for mental health pretrial release. Right. It's a five hundred dollar bond. Okay. Going to Anthony to Harris. He's mental health. Anthony Harris. He's mental health. Yes. All right. This is case number twenty one MM five five seven eight zero trespass. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent him. Uh, we'll waive, Your Honor. All right. Can we screen him for mental health pretrial release as well? Otherwise, it's a $500 bond, no return, no contact. All right, sir, tell me your name, please. Jarvis Alexander. All right, good morning, sir. You're here in case number 2021 MM574AO, 
charged with battery domestic violence. I reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find probable cause exists in this case. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Sir, do you wish to testify? Yes. All right, you're gonna have to get really close to the microphone. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I understand it's really short, but the masks make it hard to hear and you have to leave that on. So please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear to tell the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth stuff you got? Yes. Please state your name for the record. Uh, Roman Alexander. All right, does the state wish to inquire? Yes, Mr. Alexander, how do you know Jarvis Alexander? Uh, that's my husband. Are you afraid of him? No. Would you like for him to be allowed to have no hostile or nonviolent contact with you while this case is pending? Yes. If something happened in the future, would you feel comfortable in calling the police or 911? Yes. Were drugs or alcohol related to this incident? Yes. Yes. Um, and has anything happened in the past? Not with him, no. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry, one more. Um, the defendant qualifies for being released without having to post a bond. Do you have any objection to him being released without having to post a bond? Please. I'm sorry? I'm, yes, please. I, have, I want him home. Okay, thank you. All right, does the defense wish to inquire? No questions, Your Honor. I'm sorry. I, I, I want to make sure I understood all of that. Sir, did you say that you do want him to return home? Yes. You have to get really close to the microphone. Oh, yes. And... You do want contact with him? Please, yes. All right. And he did say drugs and alcohol was involved in this incident. Right. All right, sir. At this time, I'm going to place you on pretrial release. While on pretrial release, special conditions, you're not allowed to possess or consume any alcohol. You'll be subject to random screens. You're not allowed to possess or consume any illegal drugs. I'm going to allow you to have peaceful contact with your husband. Do you understand what peaceful contact means? Yes. You can't even raise your voice. Do you understand? I understand. All right. I'm going to allow you to return to the residence. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearms or ammunition. Was that it, counselor? Yes, your honor. All right. All right, good luck, sir. Good luck, sir, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, please tell me your name. Marco Noel Cabello Herrera. Huh, hold on a second. Michael Noel Cabello Herrera? Yes. All right, what happened to you, Chauncey Myers? It's a traffic. All right, I have two, two before him, but all right, I'll just wait. All right, sir. You're here in case number 2021 CF 955 AO, charged with carjacking with a firearm, fleeing or attempting to elude a law enforcement officer with lights and sirens activated, leaving the scene of a crash with injuries, grand theft with a firearm, and open carrying of a weapon or firearm. I reviewed the probable cause affidavit in this case, and I do find probable cause exists. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Uh, I Correct me if I'm wrong, counselors, but isn't count one a punishable by life? Isn't yes. it a life felony? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor, but uh, did, that, that, that charge wasn't included on, on our face sheet. It should have been. I think what happened, Your Honor, um, he was seen, I believe, yesterday um he's back today for the state to provide info as to pc on count one only so for now they are or carjacking with a firearm because i don't believe they found pc yesterday in ia court all right madam or i should have been no bond for 24 hours for the state but your honor it's my printer is being a little slow so i have, may I have a moment yes it's printing i was intending to leave it at no bond that's gonna be a state's request, but I'm right. I got an email. I guess I'm just checking my email from that. From All right, thank you. The weekend attorney. Hey, Your Honor, we would ask that um, can he can he be moved to the back of the docket because we haven't received that that PC. Um, I need to re re review it as well. I'm fine with that. If the jail can make that work, does that work for you all? Yes. All right, sir. We're gonna recall your case in a few minutes. The, the attorneys need to do some work. Thank you, sir. Madam Yes. 
here's one. Thank you. All right, please tell me your name, sir. Osama Yelagbi. Huh. Yeah, I'm, okay, all right, I got it. Yeah, like, was this reset because the defendant wasn't, didn't appear yesterday? It is. Okay, but the victim was present yesterday. All right, hold on one second. Okay. 2021 MM 564 AO, sir, you're here charged with battery domestic violence. The victim was present? My notes say the victim appeared and wants no contact whatsoever. She made that statement to the judge. That's the pink sticky note I have from yesterday. All right. I reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find probable cause exists in this case. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Do you wish to be heard, counselor? Yes, Your Honor. We'd ask for pretrial release. The victim was heard, and the client the client has no criminal history. So my notes indicate he does not qualify for pretrial release. He he will just be interviewed. He was never interviewed, Your Honor. Um, but in in regards to PTR, can he also get him bond just in case he does not qualify? Yes. One moment. So your bond is going to be $500. If you're able to post that bond, you're not allowed to return to the scene. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim at all. That includes third party contact and electronic. Do you understand what that means? Yes, ma'am. You may not use social media to contact her or a friend or a family member. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, you're not allowed to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs. You have to maintain a separate residence. Do you have items there that you need to retrieve? Yes, ma'am. Then I'll allow a one time return with law enforcement to retrieve your items. Hold on one second. You're not allowed to possess weapons of any kind, no firearms or ammunition. Yes, sir. Uh, I was going to ask. I was going to ask you. So, on this day, on this form, it says the victim cannot withdraw this order. Even if the victim would like to have contact with you, you must have an, any contact with the victim until the court changes this no contact order in writing. Correct. So, can I get that from? So, when I if I leave, when I come back, can I get it? Uh, from you guys saying that the no contact, that there can be contact with. It, it won't be from me, but when you get to downtown, your, your case is assigned to a judge downtown, your attorney can file a motion to modify that. Okay. But until a judge says in writing that you're allowed to have contact with her, you cannot. So if you do, and she calls the police or someone else does, you'll be rearrested and put back in jail for violating a condition of the bond. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. All right. And let's screen him for pretrial release. All of the same conditions will apply on pretrial release. Um, also, the defendant lives in Oregon, correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, will you allow him to return back out of state if he qualifies for pretrial release? That is no objection. I'm sorry? I have no objection to him being able to return home, just still no contact, even if he's in Oregon. All right. I'll allow it. Still no contact, you understand? Yes. All right, good luck, sir. Thank you. Good morning, please tell me your name. My name is Terry Shravon Sanders. All right, good morning, sir. You're here in case number, hold on, 2021 CF 948AO, charged with aggravated assault, domestic violence, and criminal mischief. He has an out on bond case as well. All right, so in this case, sir, I find probable cause exists for your arrest. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond will be $1,000 on count one, $500 on count two. If you're able to post that bond, you're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. You're not allowed to return to the scene. I'll order that you maintain a separate residence. I'll order that you stay on all medications as prescribed by your doctor. You're not allowed to possess weapons of any kind, no firearms or ammunition. You understand no contact means no third party contact, no social media, right. You understand, sir? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. I know you were yes, making Honor. that gesture, but I need you to say it out loud for the record, so. Yes, you. Yeah, thank yes, you. Yes, Your Honor. All right, and then it looks like he's out on bond in case number, 
I don't know where the case number is here. Do you show them Adam Bond? Oh, 2020MM3661AO. 3661AO. And that charge was violation of pretrial release conditions on domestic violence. I'm gonna revoke that bond. All right, sir, so I'm revoking your bond on your Adam Bond case, so you need to make sure that you talk to your attorney right away. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. All right, good luck, sir. Thank you. Sorry, I'm gonna try to throw that again. No, 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 no. I'm getting excited and mm -hmm. I have too many papers now. Everything got out of order. Yeah. Good morning. Please tell me your name. Erica Morris. All right. Good morning, ma'am. You're here in 2021 CF 98580, charged with aggravated child abuse. I reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find probable cause exists in this case. Sir, do you wish to testify? Yes, ma'am. I can't hear you. Get close yes, to the microphone. Yes, ma'am. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear to tell the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth, happy God? Yes, ma'am. Please state your name for the record. Fair me, Joseph. I, I can't hear you at all. Can you get really close to Fair the microphone? Fair me, Joseph. Okay, thank you. Does the state wish to inquire? I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Joseph, how do you know the victim, the child victim? Mother of my child. I'm sorry? It's the mother of my child. And the child is the victim of this particular case? Yes, ma'am. Are you afraid for the child's safety? Yes, ma'am. All right. And do you and Ms. Morris live together? No, ma'am. And is the child currently with you? Yes, ma'am. And can the child stay with you while this case is pending? Yes, ma'am. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, I'm appointing the public defender to represent her. Does the defense wish to inquire? Um, no questions, Your Honor. All right. Say request no contact with the child, to cooperate with any DCF investigations, no weapons, no firearms, no drugs, no alcohol. All right, ma'am, your bond in this case is $5,000. If you're able to post that bond, you're not allowed to have any contact with the child victim in this case. Do you understand what no contact means? Absolutely. No electronic contact, no using another family member or friend, no contact at all. I understand. I'm ordering that you cooperate with the DCF investigation that should be pending in this case. While out on bond, you're not allowed to possess a weapon or firearm or ammunition. Do you understand? I understand. I don't see any substance abuse alleged in this, so I'm not ordering that. All right, anything else from the state on this? No, Your Honor. All right, good luck, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for your appearance today. Good luck. Good morning. Please tell me your name. Me? What's your name, sir? Speak your name. Johnny St. Hilaire. All right. Good morning, sir. You're here in 2021 CF 98680, charged with robbery, sudden snatching, and battery domestic violence. I reviewed the probable cause affidavit in this case. I do find probable cause exists for your arrest. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Counselor, do you wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Um, in this case, we're asking for um, mental health PTR. Um, his mom did indicate in the arrest affidavit that he has some mental health issues. I'm talking about the medication. That you're buying the medication for. Tell, 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 tell. Uh, yep. His his mother at the time was um, purchasing medication for him. At the time the accident, the incident occurred. Has he been screened for mental health pretrial release? I see he does not qualify for pre PTR. Um, we can have him screen, but no, he doesn't qualify for pretrial, not with the robbery charge. All right, but he has not been screened for mental health pretrial release? No, you're not. All right, I'll have him screen for pretrial release. I've got um, discharge papers from a, a hospital I went to prior to coming here. I, I got like discharge papers with um, medications that um, I could go to a pharmacy to receive my prescriptions. All right, when they interview you, sir, you'll want to tell them that, and whatever paperwork you have, they'll review that to see if you qualify for mental health pretrial release. If you do, and if you, if you don't, I'm going to put monetary bonds amounts on your charges, but either way, both either pretrial release or bond, you're not allowed to have any contact with the victim, you can't return to her house. You're gonna to have to maintain a separate residence. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition while you're out on pretrial release or bond. I'm gonna order that you take whatever prescriptions are prescribed by your provider. 
if you're not able to qualify for pretrial release, your bond will be a thousand dollars on count mom, one. Hold on. My mom, she has the um, discharge papers for um, the prescription. She has the she's um, the person who has the papers. All right. At this time, sir, you're not allowed to have any contact with her. I'm sure his attorneys can reach out to get that paperwork from. Right. Your bank. attorneys can do that, but you cannot. So it's a thousand dollars on count one, a hundred dollars on count two. All right. Good luck, sir. for some reason. Good morning. Please tell me your name. What's your name, sir? Ralph Wotrub at W-O-T-R-U-B-A. Sir, you're here in case number 2021 CF-98780 charged with tampering with a witness to hinder communication to law enforcement and battery domestic violence. Uh, I'm sorry, battery dating violence. I have reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find probable cause exists in this case. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Does the state wish to be heard on bond? There's no objection to PCR, Your Honor. No objection? No objection, Your Honor. No, obviously no contact, no weapons, no firearms. No right. Um, not the extra question? No, no, I guess not. Yes, sir. This thing came unexpectedly last I'll, night. I'll, I would suggest you not talk about the facts of the case um, at this time. Sir, everything you're saying this morning is being recorded and can be used against you later. That's why your attorney is advising you not to speak. All right, sir, at this time, I'm going to place you on pretrial release, special conditions. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. You're not allowed to return to the scene. I'm going to order that you maintain a separate residence. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. Do you have any belongings there that you need to gather? Yes, I do, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Then I'll allow you a one-time return with law enforcement officers. Do you understand? You, you can go back one time to gather your belongings with law enforcement, not by yourself. All right. Well, who, how do I cut? Who? who? Okay, who contacts the law enforcement? Because I'm a retired police officer, so. You, you will. Your attorney can help you with that. All right, good luck, sir. Who's the attorney? I don't know. Call that number. Oh, these are upside down. Honor, Burgos, Pablo, behavior. All right. This is case number 21MM581 AO. He's charged with battery domestic violence, resisting an officer without violence, and trespass in a dwelling after warning. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit and do find there's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office. Do you want to waive his appearance this morning? Yes, we'll waive, Your Honor. All right. His bond amounts will be $500, $100, $100. If he's able to post those, he's not allowed to return to the scene. No contact with the victim. No weapons, firearms, or ammunition. Must maintain a separate residence. I'll allow one time return with law enforcement officer if needed. Ma'am, please tell me your name. Annie Burton. All right. Annie Mae Burton, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. You're here in 2021 MM 582AO, charged with battery and resisting an officer without violence. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find there's probable cause here. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. In this case, ma'am, your bond is $500 on count one, $100 on count two. If you're able to post that bond, you're not allowed to return to the scene. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim at all. That includes third party or electronic. Do you understand that? Yes. All right, you're not allowed to possess a weapon, a firearm, or ammunition. Do you have 
belongings here that you need to retrieve? Yes. All right, I will allow a one-time return with law enforcement officer to retrieve your belongings. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, good luck, ma'am. Okay. Good morning. Please tell me your name. Well, that's my wife. Uh, Bruce McCray. All right, good morning, sir. You're here in 2021 MM 570AO, charged with battery domestic violence. I reviewed the probable cause yes. affidavit. I find there's probable cause in this case. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Ma'am, can you please raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you try to tell the truth, hard truth, and nothing about the truth that we got? Yes, I do. Please state your name for the record. Jakarta McCray. May state inquiry, Your Honor? Yes, please. Miss McCray, how do you know Bruce McCray? It's my husband. Can you do me a favor to get closer to the microphone so we can hear you? It's my husband. Are you afraid of him? <sighs> you're, I know you're sticking your hand and going so so. Is that a little bit afraid of him? When he drinks. No further questions. Does the defense wish to inquire? No questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, state requests no contact at this time, maintain separate residences, no weapons, no firearms, no objection to a one-time return with law enforcement if needed. All right, sir, I'm gonna put your bond as $500. If you're able to post that bond, you're not allowed to return to the scene. You must maintain a separate residence. Do you understand what that means? Yes, ma'am. You cannot live there. I'm gonna order that you have no contact with the victim in this case. That means no third party contact, so you can't ask a friend or a family member to pass a message along. And no electronic. All my positions there. Just a moment. No electronic communication either. Do you understand that? I will allow a one time return with law enforcement to get your belongings. So you can't go by yourself, you have to be accompanied by law enforcement. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. You're not allowed to possess weapons of any kind, firearms or ammunition, and you're not allowed to possess or consume alcohol while out on bond. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Good well, luck, ma'am. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Good morning. Please tell me your name. My name is Joshua Murphy. You're here in 2021 MM 518W, charged with battery domestic violence. Sir, I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find probable cause exists in this case. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond is $500 if you're able to post that bond. You're not allowed to return to the scene. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. That includes third-party contact and electronic communication. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Is this your residence? No, I do not live where the incident happened. Okay. I'm going to order that you maintain a separate residence from the victim. You're not allowed to live with her. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, a firearm, or ammunition. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you share a residence with her right now? No, I do not. Okay. All right. Good luck, sir. Oh, did I appoint the public defender? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Good morning. Please tell me your name. Charles Norwood, ma'am. Good morning, sir. You're here in case number 2021 MM 573AO, charged with battery domestic violence. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find probable cause exists in this case. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Ma'am, please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear to tell the truth, hard truth, and nothing but the truth that we got? Yes. Please state your name for the record. Elisa Davis. May state inquire? Yes, I'm sorry. Can you tell me your name one more time? Elisa Davis. Thank you. Sorry. The masks make it hard, but you have to wear it. So thank you for clarifying for me. Of Go course. Ahead. And Ms. Davis, how do you know Mr. Norwood? Um, I'm in a relationship with him. I've been in a relationship for about 10 years. Are you afraid of him? No. Do the two of you live together? Yes. Would you like to continue to live together while this case is pending? Yes. Were drugs or alcohol related to this incident? Um, alcohol. Alcohol? Yes. Um, if something happened in the future, would you feel comfortable in calling the police or 911? Yes. Do you know about Mr. Norwood's criminal history? Yes. Knowing his criminal history and this allegation of this charge, are you afraid of him? No. No further questions, Your Honor. Does the defense wish to inquire? No questions, Your Honor. 
All right. Thank you, ma'am. You're Sir, your bond is going to be $500. If you're able to post that bond, I'm sorry, did you say you do want contact with him? Yes. I shouldn't have contact with him? I'm sorry? I said, yes, I do want contact. I shouldn't have contact with him? I, I'm trying to decide that right now. Okay. That's why I say inquiries about his criminal history. Does she, knowing his criminal history, still want, want contact? Want contact, right. Are there any children at this residence? Yes, I have a child. And do you live in the same residence with Mr. No. Norwood? Y yes. All right. At this time, I'm going to allow peaceful contact, no hostile contact. Do you understand what that means, Mr. Norwood? You can't raise your voice at her. Yes, ma'am. All right. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. But I'm not going to allow you to return to the residence. I'm going to order that you maintain a separate residence. You can return one time to gather your belongings with law enforcement. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I'm also going to order that you're not allowed to possess any weapons, firearms, or ammunition while you're out on bond. Yes, ma'am. Did you want to say something? No. Oh, sorry. Okay. And you're not allowed to possess or consume any alcohol while you're out on bond. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Good luck, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Your Honor, Thank you. can I have a moment to confer the client real quick, please? Yes. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Next, please tell me your name. Ms. Beth Reynoso. All right, good morning, ma'am. You're here in case number 2021 MM 57680, charged with battery domestic violence. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find there's probable cause in this case for your arrest. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Does the state wish to be heard on bond versus pretrial release? State has no objection to pretrial release. All right, in this case, ma'am, I'm gonna place you on pretrial release. As a condition of that, you're not allowed to, I'm going to order that you maintain a separate residence. You're not allowed to have any victim contact. You're not allowed to possess weapons, firearms, or ammunition. And Am I allowed to get my son? I'm sorry? Am I allowed to get my son? You're allowed to have contact with your son, but if he's at this residence, you cannot go there except one time with law enforcement to get your belongings. So I can't have my son? Uh, uh, speak to no, you, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything about whether you can have custody of your son. You just can't live in this residence. Uh. Yes, sir. A one time return? She is going to have a okay. one time return with law enforcement to that that location if your belongings are there. Are they there? Yeah, I have some just a few things. I took most of my things there. Okay. But I will allow you to return one time with law enforcement. That's it. Okay. All right. Anything else from the state on bond conditions? No, Your Honor. All right. Good luck, ma'am. Good morning. What's your name? Mizella Robinson. 
All right, you're here in case number 2021MM188E, charged with battery. In this case, I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find probable cause exists for your arrest. Your bond will be $500. If you're able to post that bond, you're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. That includes third party and electronic communication. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Are you living at this hotel? No, uh, that is only me residing at the hotel. I'm the only one who stays there, who pays for the hotel. Wait, you do live there? Yes, I do. All right. I'm going to order that you're only allowed to return to that scene one time with law enforcement officers to m gather your belongings, but you're not allowed to live there right now. Um, do you have I, belongings there? Yes, but um, I'm a part of an adoption program and they're the ones who paid for that hotel um he does not live there at all that's not his residence ma'am i don't have jurisdiction over him i have jurisdiction over you at this time your honor can we maintain a separate residence if, if the victim is not present then she can return if the victim is present then she can't all right i'll order that you maintain separate residences what that means is if he is staying there you cannot do you understand yes ma'am all right did i appoint the public defender to represent you yes if i do not i will Good. While out on bond, you're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. And like I said, no contact with the victim. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck, ma'am. Oh, it's still gross. What, good morning. What's your name? Miranda Salaya. All right. One moment. Thank you, sir. All right. This is case number 2021 MM 29 AA. Ma'am, you're here charged with simple assault. Hmm. Sir, do you understand it? Can you speak English? English. Okay. Do you speak Spanish? Spanish. Good morning. This is Laura Royal State Certified Interpreter. Uh, good morning. Have you previously been sworn? Yes, I have. I have a, uh, I believe, a victim here who'd like to testify who needs the assistance of the interpreter. Yes, Your Honor. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Por favor, levante la mano derecha para prestar juramento. Do you swear to tell the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth after God? Jura decir la verdad, toda la verdad, no más que la verdad, lo jura ante Dios. Lo juro. I do. Please state your name for the record. Por favor, indique su nombre para que conste en el registro. Juan Carlos. Varias Vega. Juan Carlos Varia Vega. Mm -hmm. Does the state wish to inquire? Yes. Sir. La fiscalía desea indagar. Sí, su señoría. How do you know Miss Zelaya? De dónde conoce usted a la señora Zelaya? Eh, hace nueve años donde trabajaba en una norcería. I'm sorry, the interpreter is going to ask him to approach the microphone. I didn't catch all his words. Señor, no se le escuchó todo bien. Acérquese al micrófono y hable más alto. Hace nueve años, cuando trabajaba en una norcería. About nine years ago, when we met at a nursery shop. Are you afraid of her? ¿Usted le tiene temor? No. No. Would, it, would you, I'm sorry, do the two of you live together? ¿Acaso ambos viven juntos? Uh, sí, lo estábamos yes. haciendo. Yes, we were doing that. Would you like for her to be allowed to have non-hostile or non-violent contact with you while this case is pending? ¿Desea usted que ella tenga, con, tenga contacto sin hostilidad y sin violencia mientras que este caso esté activo? Sí. Yes. Were drugs or alcohol related to this incident? ¿Hubo drogas y alcohol en este incidente? No. No. 
if something happened in the future, would you feel comfortable in calling the police or 911? Si fuera algo, um, si algo en el futuro fuera a volver a ocurrir entre ustedes dos, ¿se sentiría cómodo marcando a las autoridades o al número 911? Sí. Yes. And I have a question for pretrial. If the judge orders no hostile contact, will will they will she qualify for pretrial release? Um, no. Currently, it's stating that she's on federal probation. She would not qualify for pretrial release. Okay. Nothing else, Your Honor. Thank you, Counselor. Does the defense wish to inquire? No, Your Honor. No question. All right, ma'am, at this time, your bond is going to be $500. If you're able to post that bond, <clears throat> I'm going to order this. Sorry, go ahead. En este momento dado, la fianza será 500 dólares si usted logra depositar esa fianza. I'm going to order that you have no hostile contact with the victim. Do you understand what that means? Si, no lo, si logra depositar la fianza, le ordenaré a usted que no tenga ningún tipo de contacto hostil con la víctima. ¿Entendido lo que significa eso? Do you understand what that means? Yeah, no, no contact with him. No hostile contact. Oh, no hostile, okay. So you must have yeah. peaceful sí. contact. You can't even raise your voice. Right. Sí, que no puedo tener contacto con él. No, que no puede ser con hostilidad. Es decir, que tiene que hacerse todo en paz, que no le puede levantar la voz. Está bien. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearms or ammunition. Prohibido la tenencia de ningún tipo de arma, ni municiones, ni arma de fuegos. Sir, you do want her to return to the residence with you? Señor, ¿usted sí desea que ella pueda regresar a la residencia para estar con usted? Sí, señoría. Yes, ma'am. All right, I will allow that you are able to return to the residence with peaceful contact. Muy bien, voy a permitir que, que usted pueda regresar a esa residencia, pero el contacto tiene que ser pacífico. All right, good luck, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for coming. Thank you. Gracias, señor, por haber venido. Gracias, señoría. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank Your you, ma'am. The interpreter have the case number, please. Oh. Twenty twenty one MM two nine AA. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Likewise. Like an adventure. There we go. Good morning. Please tell me your name. Louis Castro. All right, sir. You're here in case number twenty twenty one CT six four eight AO, charged with driving under the influence. I reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find probable cause exists in this case. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond is $1,000. If you're able to post that bond, you're not allowed to drive. You're not allowed to possess or consume any alcohol. Do you understand? Yes. All right, good luck. Corey Gable, bond All right, that's case number 2021 CT 649AO, bonded out. Good morning, what's your name? Chauncey Myers. Hold on. Oh, Chauncey? I got it. Thank you. 2021 CT 654AO. Sir, you're here charged with no valid driver's license. I reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find probable cause exists in this case. I'll appoint the public, the public defender to represent you. It's already laughing at me. Your bond in this case is $500. If you're able to post that bond, sir, you're not allowed to drive. However, you have two out on bond cases, it looks like. This is Mr. Myers, Your Honor. State yes. is going to offer an adjudication of guilt, credit for time served on all three cases. That's the current case, the 2012 CT 3575 and 2016 CT 2095. All right, did you hear what the state just said? Yes. Are yes. you interested in taking that offer? I really don't understand, but uh, can you explain? Two novellas and then one Willis. 
So just so you're aware, counselor, I'm going to revoke his bond on the two cases on which he's out on bond. All the right. state's offer is credit time served. Would you like a moment to discuss with him? Dwellist in his criminal history, but I don't have his driving record. So. According to his face sheet, his last conviction was a dwellist. But I don't have his criminal history. That's just the face sheet. I'm saying, I'm gonna get out. Uh, I just wanna know for pre-trial services, are these the only three charges that hold him in? Yes. Yeah. Also on his driving record, he's got a dwellist from 2018. A dwellist from 2018? Mm-hmm. So this will be strike number two. Depending on how old that 2016 case is. So if you get it. I don't, I don't know. I'm just looking at the driver's license history that was provided to the court. And it says that he was, he had adjudication withheld on a driving while license suspended charge in 2018. Can we approach on just just look at the record? Mm-hmm. If you I think it's like the third page. It has a driving record. Absolutely. Yes, Your Honor, he, uh, he would like to accept the state's offer and enter a plea of no contest. All right, please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you try to tell the truth, tell the truth, and nothing about the truth that we got? Yes. All right. Your attorney has just told me that you want to accept the state's offer of credit time served in all of your cases. Is that true? Yes. And you understand that by pleading guilty or no contest this morning, you're going to be waiving or giving up certain constitutional rights. Like you're giving up your right to remain silent, your right to testify on your own behalf, your right to confront the witnesses the state would call to testify in their case against you, your right to a jury trial when one is required. You're not going to have any of these things. You're going to plead guilty or no contest this morning, and the court is going to sentence you today. Is that what you'd like to do? Um, so, I'm 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 kind of confused because I'm saying like, what I you said I get charged today, and like, what would that mean? Like, I'm trying no. to figure. You're going to admit that you're guilty or enter a plea of no contest this morning. I'm going to sentence you today to credit time served based on what the state has offered you. Okay, no content. But if you do that, you're not going to have a jury trial. You're not going to call any witnesses on your own behalf. You're waiving all of those rights to enter a plea today. Is that what you want to do? Yes. All right, you understand that if you're on probation in any jurisdiction, this plea could violate that probation? Yes. Are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol today? No. You understand if you're not a United States citizen, this plea could subject you to deportation? Yes. All right. Then at this time, sir, how do you wish to plead to the charge of no valid driver's license? No content. No contest? No. no contest, Your Honor. You don't want to contest the charge? Is that right? Yes. All right. And then in 2012 CT 357580, I believe the charge is also no valid driver's license. How do you wish to plead to that? No contest. And in 2016, CT 2095 AO, the charge is driving while license suspended. How do you wish to plead to that charge? No contest. All right. 
Sir, other than what the state just said and the conversations you've had with your attorney, has anyone threatened you or promised you anything to get you to enter these pleas today? No. All right, I'm going to accept your pleas of no contest. I find they're freely and voluntarily made. I will sentence you to serve how many days in jail, counselor? Yes, two days on all cases. All right, I'll sentence you to serve two days, give you credit for the two days that you've served. I'll order you to pay court costs in each of these cases. I'm going to give you a year to pay that court cost. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, good luck, sir. Good morning, sir. Please tell me your name. Alban Ortiz. You're here in case number 2021-CT-65580, charged with driving while license suspended, canceled or revoked. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I do find probable cause exists in this case for your arrest. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond is $500. If you're able to post that bond, you're not allowed to drive. However, you're also here in case number 2020-CT-78280, charged with driving while license, uh, I'm sorry, charged with driving under the influence. You're out on bond in that case. I'm going to revoke your bond. So even if you post the bond in the new case, you're not going to be getting out today. Do you understand? Can you repeat it again? I'm, I'm revoking your bond in your DUI case. I, I, this case is hoping I have, uh, uh, the case I have on um, DUI is hoping it's like, no, no, I got my lawyer working on it. Your lawyer's working on it? Uh huh. All right, your lawyer will have to continue working on it. I've revoked your bond on that case. Do you have a private attorney or do you have a public defender? I got a private, uh, private attorney on, on no, that case. Yeah. On the UI. You have a private, have a private attorney? attorney. Huh? Yeah, right. I see it is Carlos Mendez. Melendez. Oh yeah, Carlos Melendez. Right, and I'm not going to appoint the public defender in 2021 CT 655 AO. That's the new Dwellis. Okay, on a new charge, okay. Right, All sir, right. are you intending to hire your attorney to represent you in both cases? Um, no, in this case, I want to uh, resolve my uh, case of uh, to date. You don't want to talk to Mr. Melendez about this case as well? Uh, yeah. Okay, all right, then I'm not appointing the public defender. All right, good luck, sir. So like we should dance over here. All right. Name you Richards. Okay. He's medical. Oh, he's medical. Case number 21CT75AW. I'll appoint the public defender to represent him. Counsel. Um, we'll waive your honor and um, enter not, not guilty. All right. I, go ahead. Division 83, pretrial conference date will be <laughs> March 24th at 1 p.m. for room 6C. All right. Next, what's your name, sir? Oh, wait. Uh, Calandra Barrett, medical, Your Honor. I think we. Uh, we already did that one. We did that one. Come on, cool. All right, who's next? What's your name, sir? Robert Cooks. Case number 2020-MM8446-80. You're here charged with resisting an officer without violence. You're represented by the Office of the Public Defender. And this is Division 61. Your Honor, we're going to accept the offer from the state, which is the adjudication of guilt and credit for time served, and we'll enter a plea of no contest. All right, sir, please raise your right hand. Please try to tell the truth, tell the truth, and ask the truth after that. Yes, I do. Your attorney has just told the court that you'd like to enter a plea of no contest today. Is that what you'd like to do? Yes, ma'am. All right, you understand that by entering a plea of no contest today, you're going to be waiving or giving up certain constitutional rights. 
like your right to a jury trial, your right to testify on your own behalf, your right to remain silent, your right to confront the witnesses that the state would bring to testify against you. Uh, did I say right to a jury trial where one is required? Yes, you're giving up all those rights. Is that what you'd like to do? Yes, ma'am. You understand if you're on probation in any jurisdiction, this plea could violate that probation? Yes, ma'am. You understand if you're not a United States citizen, this plea could subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol today? No, ma'am. And other than what your attorney just said and what the prosecutor said today, has anyone threatened you or promised you anything else to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. All right. Then at this time, sir, how do you wish to plead to the charge of resisting without violence? No contest. I'll accept your plea of no contest. I find it's freely and voluntarily made. I'll adjudicate you guilty, order you to serve six days? 61. Oh, 61 days. 61 days in jail with credit for the 61 days that you've served. Sir, I'll order you to pay court costs in this case, and I'll give you a year to pay the court costs. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Please tell me your name. Wanda Beats Hernandez. You're here in 2020 MM 9171AO, charged with battery, domestic violence, and violation of condition of pretrial release. You're represented by the Public Defender's Office. Your Honor, we're going to enter a um, plea of not guilty. All right, this is a Division 50 case. Ma'am, your next court date will be March 15th at 2 p.m., courtroom 7C. All right, thank you, ma'am. Good luck. Good morning. What's your name, sir? Anthony Rivera. You're here in 2020 MM 2938AO, charged with possession of drug paraphernalia and soliciting funds from unauthorized roadways. You're represented by the Office of the Public Defender. Um, the state is offering an adjudication of guilt and credit for time served. We um, are going to, the defendant wants to accept that offer and enter a plea of no contest. All right, please raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, and nothing about the truth that we got? I do. All right, sir, your attorney just told me that you'd like to enter a plea of no contest today. Is that what you'd like to do? Yes, ma'am. You can put your hand down now. All right, you understand that by entering a plea today, you're going to be waiving or giving up certain constitutional rights. Yes, like I your right to remain silent, your right to testify on your own behalf, your right to a jury trial where one is required, um, your right to force the state to call witnesses and testify against you. You understand you're going to give that right, those rights yeah, up. Yes, I do, ma'am. And that's what you want to do? Yes, ma'am. All right. You understand if you're on probation in any jurisdiction, this plea could violate your probation? Yes, ma'am. You understand that if you're not a United States citizen, this plea could subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol? No, ma'am. You shouldn't be. All right. Other than what the state just said, sir, has anyone promised you anything or threatened you to get you in on this plea? No, ma'am. Then at this time, how do you wish to plead to the charge of possession of drug paraphernalia and soliciting funds from unauthorized roadways? Uh, no contest. All right, sir. I'm going to accept your plea of no contest. I find it's freely and voluntarily made. I'll adjudicate you guilty on each count and order you to serve 26 days, giving you credit for the 26 days that you've served. I have to order that you pay court costs in this case, sir, and I'm going to give you a year to pay that. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Have Thank a good you. day. God bless you. All right. You as well. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Please tell me your name. Yes, yeah, Stevie Wilson. All right, sir. You're here in case number 2020-MM8718AO. Charged with trespass in a structure. You're represented by the Office of the Public Defender. Your Honor, we're going to enter a plea of not guilty. Division 62? Yes. So, yes. sir, your next court date will be? It will be February 26th at 9 a.m. Courtroom 9B. All right. Good luck, sir. Thank you. All right.
All right. <clears throat> Recalling case number 2021 CF 95580, State of Florida versus Michael Cabela Herrera. Are both parties ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Your Honor, I would ask the court not to find probable cause for the carjacking with a firearm or reading the newly submitted probable cause documentation. Um, it appears that law enforcement is basing the suspect description of the person um, who allegedly committed the, the carjacking as a white male, approximately five feet, nine inches in height. But the defense will argue that this is a very vague and broad description. This, it could include like thousands and thousands of people, Your Honor. The um, law enforcement officer also narrates in the probable cause document that based on the fact that the driver of the carjacking vehicle matched the suspect description of the armed carjacking, that's when they engaged in the vehicle pursuit. But like um, again, I'd like to point out that it's a vague description and nothing unique was reported about the, the alleged assailant, like a tattoo or a scar, a visible scar to the face or neck area or any um, unique article of clothing that that person may have been uh, wearing at the time. I do realize that, they, that, the, that there is PC for the rest of the charges included. But most importantly, what I would like to point out is that there was no positive identification of the alleged, uh, by the alleged victim in this case of my client. Um, the law enforcement officer took photos of the crime scene. However, they did not show any of those pictures to the alleged victim to get a positive ID, nor did they conduct a photo lineup to properly identify my client as the alleged assailant in this case. Um, until these further investigations are conducted, it is basically mere speculation that my client actually used a firearm to take the vehicle, Your Honor, and in that case, I would actually not find probable cause for the carjacking. All right, thank you, State. State's was wrong, absolutely, Your Honor. I think that would be nice if the vehicle wasn't stolen during the carjacking. This vehicle, it was the suspected vehicle that was taken during the carjacking that the defendant was the driver of. That vehicle led the officers on a high pursuit chase, striking at least one other vehicle, and then after striking that vehicle, continued on in speeds, um, speeding away where this defendant was, as the driver, was immediately ordered out at gunport, at gunpoint, excuse me, by law enforcement officers. I believe, Your Honor, because it was a suspected vehicle stolen during the armed carjacking, he, uh, this defendant was the driver of that vehicle that was taken, and the gun was found by the driver's side. Um, I believe that is enough to hold the defendant at no bond. Can I briefly respond, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Um, like I said, uh, there's probable cause for the fleeing and looting, and then there's the... Uh, Leaving the scene of a crash with injuries, there's the grand theft third degree firearm in the, in the open carry. I believe the firearm was located in the position of the vehicle that was accessible to all of the occupants. However, there's no positive identification, Your Honor. So um, the alleged victim has not stated that my client took the car from his um, constructive or immediate control. So there's no PC for a carjacking, which is punishable by life in the state of Florida, Your Honor, not, not at this time. All right, thank you both. <clears throat> at this time, I do find there's probable cause. Counselor, your client was the driver of a car that had been carjacked with a firearm, and there was a firearm found in the vehicle that your client was driving. And I understand your argument about the loose description of the individual who carjacked the car, but your client does fit that description. So. This is just a probable cause determination. This is not beyond all reasonable doubt. I understand that the defense may have some excellent arguments at a later stage of this trial, but for today, I'm finding that there is probable cause to hold your client. And well, in that case, Your Honor, um, taking my arguments into account and that it's loose on probable cause and this charge is punishable by life in the state of Florida, I would ask the court to use the discretion in setting a bond of $50,000 in this case, Your Honor. What says the state? On his charge. They would object on that he be held at no bond um, and stay all bonds that were set yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. And y'all, I just don't believe that they have enough evidence to hold a person at no bond on a 
um, F1 PBL with, with, with the, the loose information that's presented before the court, I'll ask the court to accept bond in the amount of $50,000 or at an amount that uh, you believe is appropriate but to set a bond. So, Counselor, this goes back to the discussion that we had the other day on another case. I, my understanding of the law is that I'm required to continue the no bond on a punishable by life offense unless we have the Arthur hearing and I make a finding about proof evident and presumption great. So at this time, unless the defense is requesting an Arthur hearing, I'm going to continue your client at no bond on count one. No, I'm not, I'm not uh, requesting Arthur hearing. I do have the case law we, we were talking about. However, I'm, I'm in the process of um, drawing up the argument, so it's okay. not prepared at this time. All right, I understand and I appreciate that. So for now, count one is still going to be no bond. Count two, I'll leave it at $15,000. Count three is 5,000. Count four, it looks like it was reduced to a $150 bond. And count five is a $150 bond. So I'll leave those as is. Thank All right, you. good luck, sir. Thank you, honestly. Thank you. All right. Are you ready for the 33 day motions? Yes, sir. Starting with 2020 CF. I'm sorry, what? Can we have a moment, Your Honor? Yes. So let's go on the record in the BRC here. So I can put guys the same put names on the record. Copy Kennedy Swanson on behalf of the Office of State Attorney. And can I have from the Public Defender's Office? Jay Thompson on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender. Letitia George on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender. Uh, Mr. Horween, you know who you're, who's your client? My client is Susan Gable, Judge. You need a few more minutes with uh, Ms. Swanson? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I think we have Ms. Okay. Gable's case worked out, Judge, if we can resolve that. <laughs> if you want the prosecutor to. twisted my arm, said mean things to me. <laughs> or she you see her gamble. online and at home already. So. Well, she has a bond. I, but she's a, the, the case is an older case. It was a bit of an error that she got picked up again, basically, on it. Um, right. But the prosecutor's uh, offering withhold time for the court cost. So right, let's do it. Uh, I believe there's a cost of investigation as well as $95. $95. $95? Any change? Since 95 is even. Okay, to who? OPD. to the jail, Judge. Yeah, pretty good <laughs> so far. Can't complain. Got my clerks, got Miss Davis keeping the company. She's not even paying attention to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got her because she wasn't was paying zero attention. Yeah, we, we took their gloves. Yeah. Okay. These are good guys. Uh, they give us the cheap. I know you're trying to have a team look or something over there. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I'll get that. So I'm saying, but in that face mask must have hurt you. <laughs> face shield. Let's move. You're gonna move the mic down to her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yep, there you go. Good afternoon, ma'am. Can you tell you me? Can you tell me your name? Susan Gable. Miss Gable, you are here in 2020 MM 4330 AO on a failure to appear warrant. The judge in that case set your bond at two thousand dollars. You're represented by Mr. Horween, who's standing to your left, and he's told me that the you all have worked out a deal. Yes, Judge. She's agreeable to that. All right. Okay. And how many days credit time service she have? She has two days, Your Honor. Right. And Ms. Gable, you understand, I think the offer is a withhold adjudication of guilt and court costs. And I'll give you credit for the two days that you spent in Orange County Jail. Yes. And it's a cost of investigation, $95 to the Orlando Police Department. Do you understand that? Okay. Yes. All right. I understand. You're going to speak like a little bit louder because I'm not sure if our court reporter can hear you from back there. I'm sorry. No problem. Just positioning of these microphones aren't the greatest. All right, man. Could you raise your right hand if you sworn in? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, self we got? Yes, I do. You can put your hand down, ma'am. Ma'am, you are here in 2020, MM 4330 AO, on a charge of petty theft. That is a second degree misdemeanor. It's punishable by six days in a county jail and a $500 fine. Do you understand that? Yes. <clears throat> it's my understanding that you'd like to enter a plea of Mr. Horman guilty or no contest? No contest if you accept that, Judge. All right. Uh, enter a plea of no contest to these charges. Is that correct? Do you, you want to enter a plea of no contest? Yes. All right. You understand by entering a plea of no contest, you give it the right to have a trial in this matter. Yes. I do. Yes. All right. Do you, give, do you understand you give it the right to have Mr. Horwin represent you at that trial? Yes. Mr. Horween can challenge the state's evidence. He can question the state's witnesses and call witnesses on your behalf. Do you understand that? Yes. And if he, if he was a witness you wanted to call and did that, the witness did not want to appear, do you understand the court can use the subpoena power to make that witness appear? Do you understand? Yes. Do you understand you give the right to appeal any errors in this case other than the court's jurisdiction? And the, whether the sentence I want to impose is legal. Do you understand that? Yes. Are you under influence of any drugs or alcohol at this time? No. Have you now or in the past been diagnosed with a mental health illness? I suffer from depression. All right, do you take any medication for your depression? Yes, I take Prozac. Does that medication aid you in understanding the world around you? Oh, yes. All right, <clears throat> are you suffering from any of the symptoms of your, of your depression at this time? No. Has anybody forced, threatened, or coerced you to enter this plea? No. Do you understand by entering this plea if you're not a United States citizen it could subject you to deportation? Yes. Do the parties stipulate to a factual basis? Because I don't have. Any. Yes, Judge. Ms. Swanson? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Under that stipulation, the court will accept that you find it as a factual basis for the entering of your plea. I'll accept your plea of no contest. I'll find that your plea is freely and voluntarily entered. I will withhold adjudication of guilt. I will give you credit for the two days that you spent in the Orange County Jail with two days' credit time served. I will impose a cost of investigation <clears throat> of $95 to the Orlando Police Department. And the court costs and cost of prosecution in this case are $273. I will give you one year from today's date to pay that money directly to the clerk in full. Do you understand that? Yes. You have 30 days from today's date to appeal your judgment and sentence in writing. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Have a great day, ma'am. Good to see you, Mr. Horwin. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Have a good day. This is Mr. Davenport. Can we pass over Graham? I had David Allen Davenport is my first person. Davenport. There's a reset from yesterday. Well, I don't know if that's said Judge O'Kane reset him for a plea to today at one. I got, I got a sheet that said Alan. Yes, 
Bond? Yeah, he has an inmate number 21001944. I mean, I'm still showing he's in the system, but I didn't know anything about a reset for him. Wow. Just going to show you what, what I got. <laughs> Somebody gave this to me? So. No problem. Do my best. Okay. I have a note on my paperwork that says reset from yesterday. Yeah. I mean, from the attorney from this weekend. Yeah. All right, we'll skip over Graham, and this is Mr. Green, then? Yes, sir. Can you tell me your name, sir? Timothy Stephen Green, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Green, you are here in 2021 MM 54AW on a charge of petty theft, can or concealed weapon, and one, two, three, four counts of that. The court did review the charging affidavit in this case. I did find probable cause. State. You have an offer for Mr. Green? No, Your Honor. Is that no? No, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor. I got a question. This bond correction paperwork I have here, is the total bonds for the carrying concealed firearm $500? Is that what it's supposed to be trying to do? Okay. Um, Allen down. They were, Your Honor. 125 a piece. They were actually. Uh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh. So you had the right to remain silent? Okay. I want to point the public defender to represent you in this case since the state doesn't have an offer for you. Um, I want to stay your bonds in the amount of 100 uh, at 125 on each of the four carrying concealed firearm counts, carrying concealed weapon counts. Conditional your bonds do not return to the location where this happened. Oh, your honor oh no 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 okay um i advise my client not to speak but he still wants to speak with you all right go ahead mr green if could i could i plead to the uh bench on the misdemeanors and the concealed weapons were my knives i worked with in my book bag so i don't know why they charged me with concealed weapons um, on that I, don't, I have no idea what the knives look like. They would object to a plea as the petty theft is an enhanceable offense. Correct. That's the problem. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I see you have criminal history. Some of them being theft-related charges. This is an uh, enhanceable offense. So if you have two or more prior theft convictions, this can be a third-degree felony as far as that charge. So I'm not comfortable pleading this case out without giving the state the opportunity to investigate whether they're going to charge you with what they call petty theft two prior, a felony petty theft. I'm still, I didn't want to say your bonds amount because this is just probable cause. This is not a trial, sir. So you may have had knives that don't qualify as weapons. I don't okay. know. You're, you may have knives that do qualify as weapons that you may need a permit for. Still don't know. Based on the information I have right now, there is probable cause for your arrest. I'm going to set your bond as account one in the amount of Actually, I want to say this bond is to pay theft in the amount of $250. I don't know why they changed it. And then I'll set the bonds as to the carrying concealed weapons on all of the counts in the amount of $125. No, still conditions bond not return. Come on, sir, tell me your name. Marcos Rodriguez. All right. Joseph Rodriguez? I'm sorry? What's your, you said, what's your first name? Marcos, M-A-R-C-O-S. Okay, All right, Mr. Rodriguez, you are here in 2021 MM 30AA on charge of trespass and a structure or con other than a structure or conveyance refusal to leave. The court did review the affidavit in this case. I did find probable cause for your arrest. Say, is there an offer for Mr. Rodriguez? Withhold credit for time served, no return. Mr. Rodriguez, the state of Florida is offering what they call a withhold adjudication of guilt credit for the time you spent, which I think is... One day, one Your day, Honor. One day in the Orange County Jail. Is that an offer you'd like to take? Say that again. I'm sorry. Is that an offer you want to take today? What, what was it? 
is a withhold of adjudication of guilt. Credit for the one day that you spent in the Orange County Jail. There's $273 in court costs and costs of prosecution. Yes. You want to take that offer? Is there a better offer? No, that's no. about as good as it gets, other than uh -huh. your case getting dropped. Okay. All right, you put your, raise your hand. No, right hand. There you go. Sorry, just been more specific. <clears throat> Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, help you got? I do. All right, you put your hand down, sir. Tell me your name one more time. Marcos Rodriguez. Mr. Rodriguez, you are here in 2021 MM 3088 on a charge of trespass on other than a structure or conveyance refusal to leave. That is a first degree misdemeanor. It's punishable by one year in the county jail and a thousand dollar fine. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Did you want to air a plea of guilty or no contest to these charges? No contest. It's up to you. You want guilty or no contest? Uh, no contest. All right, that's fine. You understand by pleading no contest to these charges, you're giving up the right to have a trial on this matter. Right. You understand you give up the right to have a trial if you're pleading no contest to this case? Yes or no? Yeah. All right, Ms. Rodriguez, you had an opportunity to speak with Ms. George. You understand that if you're entering a plea of no contest, one of the rights you're giving up to do that is enter to have a trial. You understand that? Yes. Yes. All right. You understand that you're giving up the right to have the court appoint an attorney if you can't afford it? Yes. You understand you're giving up the right to remain silent? Yes. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol at this time? No, sir. Have you now or in the past been diagnosed with a mental health illness? No, sir. Has anybody forced, threatened, or coerced you to enter this plea? I'm sorry? Has anybody forced, threatened, or coerced you to enter this plea? No. You understand by entering this plea could subject you to deportation if you're not a United States citizen. Okay. You understand that? Yes, sir. All right. I did review the charging affidavit in this case. I do find a factual basis for the entry of your plea. I accept your plea of no contest in this case. I will withhold adjudication of guilt. I'll give you credit for the one day that you spent in the Orange County Jail with one day credit time served. And I'll impose court costs and cost of prosecution amount of $273. I will order that you pay those costs directly to the clerk within one year of today's date. You understand? Yes, sir. Have a great day, sir. Guys, name, sir. Tell me your name. Uh, Tyler Sheets. Mr. Sheets, you are here in 2021 MM 55AW on charge of petty theft. That is a. The court has reviewed the charging affidavit in this case and found probable cause for your arrest. State, is there an offer for Mr. Sheets to resolve this case? There is not, Your Honor. Mr. Sheets, there's no offer to resolve your case. Oh. PTR. Mr. Sheets, where do you reside? Uh, 1630 East Bay Street in Winter Garden. All right. PTR is the only reason why he doesn't qualify is because you guys can contact somebody on the outside. That, that, that is an oh, issue I've wait, been wait, having. Wait, wait. It looks that way, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Sheets, do you have a cell phone? Yes. Or a phone number? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. I want to release Mr. Sheets on pretrial release in this case. I'm going to order that he um, do not, what condition of his pretrial release is that he does not miss any court dates and he does not return to the location of this incident, has no contact with any victims or witnesses of this case. Right. Have a great day, sir. Thank you.
Governor James Summers. He refused court. All right. Uh, Mr. Summers is supposed to be here in 2021, MM 538W. I want to appoint the public defender to represent Mr. Summers. You all want to waive his appearance today? Yes, we'll waive, Your Honor. All right. I will, the court did review this case and found probable cause for his arrest. I want to stay his bonds in the amount of $500 in this case. And you know, on to his next court date. Good afternoon, sir. Can you tell me your name? Cor Demetrius Turner. All right. Mr. Turner, you are here in 2021, MM569AO, on a charge of trespass after warning in a, um, in a conveyance and possession of cannabis less than 20 grams. It says an offer to resolve Mr. Turner's case. There is not, however, no objection to ROR's count two. All right. Um, Your Honor, right, we would also, oh, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, um, we would also ask for an ROR yeah, on the I'll, trespass. Yeah. So, Mr. Turner, I'm gonna release you on your own recognizance conditions of your release are as follows, is that you are to not return to this location. You're, to, you're going to main, I want to appoint a public defender to represent you. You're going to, main, you're going to need to maintain contact with your attorney. So yeah. was my, was, was I refunded for the stay? The what? Like the I what paid, now? I paid to stay in the hotel. Huh? Was I refunded my money for the days that I wasn't in the hotel? I have no idea what that's what yeah. what that's about. I'm going to talk about the criminal case you're facing right now. So for trespassing and conveyance and possession of cannabis, whatever contract you have going on in a hotel, I'm unaware of. But you need to maintain contact with your attorney, the public at the public defender's office. So you need to call them at least twice, a, like twice a month, to make sure you don't miss any court dates. You're going to get a court date when you leave here, Mr. Turner. Look at me. You're going to get a court date when you leave here. When you're just going to sign for it when you get released. If you miss that court date, there'll be some people in some green uniforms looking for you to arrest you. You understand that? So don't miss your court date. Right. Have a great day, sir. All right, ma'am, tell me your name. Shanice Green. Ms. Green, you are here in 2020, MM 3971AO. I warrant or capious for a failure to appear in that case. The judge in that case set your bond at one thousand dollars. I'm going to stay your bond at one thousand dollars. Have a great day, ma'am. Sir, tell me your name. Uh, Williamson Lu Jean. I can't hear you. Uh, Williamson Lu Jean. Say your name again. You got to speak louder. Uh, Williamson Lu Jean. All right, Mr. Lu Jean, you are here in 2020 MM 1240 AO on a charge of, well, sorry, in a, for a capious signed by a judge for a failure to appear. The judge in that case set your bond at $1,000. Your bond will remain at $1,000. And we'll get you to your next court date. Have that a great day, sir. Is a adjudication okay. time served. All right, Mr. Eugene, there's an offer from the state of Florida that's a withhold adjudication of guilt. Credit time serves. An offer you want to take today? He's thinking about it. Also, in Ms. Green's case, previously before I appoint a public defender to represent her, oh. Ms. Green.
Okay, Your Honor. Ms. Logine, did you want to take the state's offer? I have to speak with Ms. George. Doesn't, yes or no, it doesn't matter to me. You don't have to. It's not someone who's forcing you to do it. I think it appears she may need some time to think about it or have someone from my office talk to him further, Your Honor. Yeah, yeah. I point, Ms. Lugine, I want to point the public defender to represent you in this case. Right now, your bonds are stated at $1,000. But if you want to speak to Ms. George and Mr. Thompson further today, you may resolve your case a little later if you have time. All right, have a great day, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Can you tell me your name? Mark Nichols. Mr. Nichols, you are here in 2021, MM. 473 AO for in two counts of resisting officer about violence and assault on a law enforcement officer. The court has reviewed the charging affidavit in this case. I find probable cause for your arrest. I'm going to stay your bonds in amount of $500 each on each count. I want to appoint the public defender to represent you. We'll get you on to your next court date. Have a good day, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Can you tell me your name? Marcello Anderson. Mr. Anderson, you are here in oh, sorry, 2021 MO130 on a charge of. Uh, yeah, two cases? Mm, no, he only has one. Oh, sorry. This is. I got two people stuck together. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry, this is case 2021 MO130 on a charge of uh, an alcohol, alcoholic beverage or open container in a prohibited area. Ms. Swanson, is there an offer for Mr. Anderson to resolve his case today? A withhold of adjudication, credit for time served. All right. Mr. Anderson, offer from the state of Florida is a withhold of adjudication and guilt. I give you credit for the two days that you spent in the Orange County Jail. This court calls the cost of prosecution amount of two hundred and seventy-three dollars. And an offer you want to take today? Yeah. All right. Can you raise your right hand? Be sworn in. Uh huh. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this matter? The truth, the whole truth, number of the truth, self you got. Yes, sir. Can you put your hand down, sir. Tell me your name one more time. Marcello Dante Anderson. Mr. Anderson, you are here in 2021 MO130AO, uh, <clears throat> in charge of an alcoholic beverage and open or open container in a prohibited area. That is a second degree misdemeanor. It's punishable by 60 days in a county jail and a $500 fine. Do you understand that? Uh huh. Do you want to enter a plea of guilty or no contest to resolve this case? Yeah, I'd like to resolve it. Do you want to plead guilty or no contest, though? No contest, Your Honor. Yeah, I, right. there you go. All right, you, I, you understand I, my plea? All right, so I'm going to go over your rights with you, like entering a plea in a case. You understand my plea, no contest. You give me up the right to have a trial in this case. You understand? Okay, good. You understand? You give up the right to have an attorney appointed to you to represent you at that trial. Okay. <clears throat> so then, no contest it is. Yeah, that's fine. You yeah, still got to go over your rights. These are all your rights that you have. <clears throat> are you an influence of any drugs or alcohol at this time? No, sir. Have you now or in the past been diagnosed with a mental health illness? Yes, sir. What's that mental health illness? Yes, sir. Do you take any medications for your schizophrenia? Not right now. All right. Are you suffering from any of the symptoms of your schizophrenia at this moment? Not right now. Right. Has anybody forced, threatened, or no. forced you to enter this plea? No, sir. You understand about entering this plea if you're not a United States citizen, it could subject you to deportation. Uh huh. I reviewed the charging affidavit in this case. I find a factual basis for the entering your plea. I'll accept your plea of no contest. I'll withhold adjudication of guilt. I'll give you credit for the 273 days that you spent in the Orange County Jail. Two days. Two days. Oh, sorry. Two days that you spent in. All right. Wow. Two days that you spent in the Orange County Jail with two days credit time served. 
I want to impose court costs and costs of prosecution in the amount of $273. I'll give you one year from today's date to pay that cost directly to the clerk in full. You understand? Yes, sir. You have 30 days from today's date to appeal your judgment and sentence in writing. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. Have a great day, sir. Thank you. Show no appreciate. Your Honor, he's um, waiting for you to recall him whenever Ms. you're Ms. Lugine? Yes, Your Honor. Back to Ms. Well, after we do, this is Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, then we'll go back to Mr. Lejeune after that. <clears throat> Mr. Can you tell me your name, sir? Nicholas Alexander Brown. Mr. Brown, you are here in 2021 CO 103 for solicitation without a permit. That is a it says an offer for Mr. Brown to resolve his case. With full credit time, sir. All right, sir. This is all we're going to say for the withhold adjudication of guilt credit time served. You understand? Time served? Yes, sir. What does that mean? I'll be able to get out of jail? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Do you want to take that offer? Yes, sir. You want to raise your right hand to be sworn in? Yes, sir. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. You put your hand down, sir. Tell me your name one more time. Nicholas Alexander Brown. Mr. Brown, you're here in 2021, CO 103, for solicitation without a permit. That's a second degree misdemeanor. That's punishable by 60 days in a county jail and a $500 fine. Do you understand that? No, sir, I didn't know, but now I know. All right, do you understand that it's punishable by 60 days in an Orange County jail and $500 yes, fine now? All right. Do you understand, do you want to enter a plea of guilty or no contest for these charges? Uh, if I plead guilty, that mean I did time serve? No contest. Either one doesn't matter. No contest. All right. You understand know, my plea, no contest. We're gonna go over your rights right now. You know, saying you give the right to have a trial. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. You know, saying you give the right to have an attorney appointed to represent you at a trial. Yes, sir. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol this time? No, sir. Have you now or in the past been diagnosed with a mental health illness? No, sir. Has anybody forced, threatened, or coerced you to enter this plea? No, sir. You understand know, by entering this plea, if you're not a United States citizen, it could subject you to deportation. Yes, sir. I reviewed the charging affidavit in this case. I do find a factual basis for the entering your plea. I accept your plea with no contest in this matter. I will give you uh, two, days. Told you two days. I'll give you credit for the two days that you spent in the Orange County Jail with two days credit time served. And I'll impose court costs and costs of prosecution amount of $273. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll give you one year from today's date to pay that money directly to the clerk in full, and I'm not taking any action on the out of count, out of case you're out on bond. Yes, sir. But don't. Don't do it again. Don't come back here. Yeah, okay. All yes, right. Sir. Go ahead, get to your next, make sure you obtain your next court date. Okay. For your felony case. Have a great day, sir. All right. All right, Mr. Lejeune, can you raise your right hand to be sworn in? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, number of the truth, self you got? Yeah. You gotta speak up and I gotta, I gotta be able to hear you. Yes, sir. All right. Sir, you're here in 2000, put your hand down, sir. You're here in 2020, MM 1240 AO, on a charge of resisting officer without violence. That's a first degree misdemeanor. It's punishable by one year in a county jail and a thousand dollar fine. Do you understand that? Oh, yes. All right, Ms. George, what, uh, what plea would your client like to enter this time? Um, he'd like to enter a plea of no contest, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Lujan, do you understand by entering a plea of no contest, you give up, give up giving up certain rights? One of those rights is giving up the right to have a trial. Do you understand that? Oh yes. All right. You understand you give up the right to have Ms. George represent you at a trial? You guys, you guys are allowed, and I got to be able to hear you. Oh yeah. Okay. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol at this time? Oh no. You are under the influence of drugs or alcohol? No. All right. Have you now or in the past been diagnosed with a mental health illness? No. Has anybody forced, threatened, or coerced you to enter this plea? No. You don't understand about entering this plea if you're not a United States citizen and could subject you to deportation. Sorry, could you repeat that? You don't understand if you're not a United States citizen, entering of this plea could subject you to deportation. Yeah. All right. How many days credit does you have? He has five days, Your Honor. All right. And you all stipulate into a factual basis? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor, for all the right. purposes of the plea. 
The court will find a factual basis for the entering your plea, Mr. Legine. The court will withhold adjudication, uh, accept your plea of no contest, uh, withhold adjudication of guilt. I give you credit for the five days that you spent in the Orange County Jail with five days credit time served. And I oppose court costs and cost of prosecution, um, public defender lien and public defender assistance fee for a total of $373. I make, I'll give you one year from today's date to pay the money directly to the clerk in full. Do you understand? Oh, yeah. Total cost in this case is $373. You have one year to make that payment to the clerk. All right, have a great day, sir. Captain, sir, can you tell me your name? Ramon Rivera Morales. All right, Mr. Morales, Mr. Rivera Morales, you are here in 2021, CO104, on a charge of solicitation, soliciting without a permit. Say, is there an offer for Mr. Rivera Morales? With all credit for time, sir. Mr. Rivera Morales, do you want to take the offer of withhold adjudication of guilt? Credit time served? Yes. All right, can you raise your right hand and be sworn in? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, none but the truth, self we got? Yes. Can you hear you? Yes. All right. Can you put your hand down, sir? You're here, and, sir, you're, can you tell me your name one more time? Ramon Rivera Morales. Sir, you're here in 2021 CO 104 AO. On charge of soliciting without a permit, that's a second degree misdemeanor. It's punishable up to 60 days in the county jail and a $500 fine. Do you understand that? No. Yeah. Do you understand by, you want to enter a plea of guilty or no contest to these charges? No. Yeah. Do you understand by entering a plea of guilty, you give up the right to have a trial in this matter? No. Yeah. Do you understand you give up the right to have um, an attorney appointed to represent you in the trial? No. Yeah. How are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol at this time? No. Have you now or in the past been diagnosed with a mental health illness? No. Has anybody forced, threatened, or forced you to enter this plea? No. You understand about entering this plea if you're not a United States citizen, it could subject you to deportation? No. You said yes? You understand? No, yes. All right. Yes. Sir, I reviewed the charging affidavit in this case. I found a factual basis for the entering of your plea. I'll accept your plea of guilty in this case. Find that it's freely and voluntarily entered. I will withhold adjudication of guilt. I give you credit for the two days that you spent in the Orange County Jail. I'll propose court costs and costs of prosecution amount of $273. I order that you pay those costs directly to the clerk within one year of today's date. You have 30 days from today's date to appeal your judgment and sentence in writing. All right, have a great day, sir. Mm -hmm. This is Mr. Graham, passed over earlier, you know. All right, Mr. Graham. Good morning. Well, it's a good afternoon, man. Afternoon. It's two. Tell me your name, sir. Markel Jamal Graham. Brown or Graham? Graham. Okay. Mr. Graham, you are here in 2021 MM 572 AO on charge of resisting an officer without violence. Court did review the charging affidavit in this case. I do find a factual basis for the entering of the plea. Ms. Swanson, is there it's an offer in case you can resolve today? Yes, sir. Kennedy Swanson, on behalf of the state, there is no offer on this case. However, there is no objection to no action on the out on bond case. Graham, can you stay out of trouble, man? Yes, sir. I, I just... Because Ms. Swanson is asking a lot right now. Um, I'm going to set your bond in this case amount of $1,000. I'm not going to take any action on your felony case that y'all on bond on. Sir? I'm not, I'm not going to revoke your bond, but... 
I'm going to sit. I ain't blind or yeah. not. Stay in the house. <laughs> Have a great day, sir. Yeah. I'm putting the public defender to represent Mr. Graham in all his cases. Catherine, sir, can tell me your name. My name is Brian Brown, sir. All right, Mr. Brown, you are here in 2021 CF971AO on charge of possession of MDMA or ecstasy. Court did find probable cause based on the charging affidavit for your arrest. Yes, sir. Uh, PTR. Just because you can't get somebody in contact with somebody? It says see additional notes, but then they usually meant something. There was some. He has no criminal history. Yeah, he can qualify. All right, <laughs> Mr. Brown, I'm place you on pretrial release in this case. Thank you, sir. Condition your pretrial release that you do not possess or consume any drugs or alcohol. That you are drug tested through PTR at your own expense. Okay, no problem. All right. All right. Have Thank you, day, sir. Back on it. Your Honor, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, are you ordering random urinalysis? Yes, yes sir. Uh, can we have a 30-day grace period? I'll give them a 30-day grace period. So, Mr. Brown? Yes, sir. I'm giving you 30 days to get whatever you got in your system out. Okay. All right, but after that. So, I know. Right. Yep. I got you, sir. Thank you. All right, tell me your name, sir. How you doing? Tell me your name. Uh, Christopher Diaz. Mr. Diaz, you are here in 2021 CF 974AO on charge of possession of fentanyl. Of course, if you to charge the affidavit in this case, I do find a factual basis for hearing your plea. Mr. Diaz, you have a phone? I'm sorry? Yo, put your face, cover your face. You have a phone, cell yes. phone. Yes, all right. sir. Do you, where do you usually live? Who do you live with? I live with my dad. All right. And is that the um, 2562 South Conway Road? Yes, address? sir. All right. I think over, um, PTR's recommendation. I'm going to place you on pre-trial release in this case. I'm going to uh, make a condition of your pre-trial release that you do not possess any drugs or alcohol, that you are subject to random drug testing at your expense through pre-trial release. I'll also give you 30 days to get whatever you're in your system out. But after 30 days, test positive, you're going to be seeing me again. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Have a great day. All right. All right, this is 2021 CF 959. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent Mr. Roy Giles. We'll waive, Your Honor. Oh. Can, we, can we go to Mr. Howard? Okay. We'll skip Mr. Giles for a minute and keep yes, talking to Mr. Howard. How you doing, Your Honor? All right. Can you tell me his name, sir? Vincent Lee Howard, Jr. Mr. Howard, you're here in 2021 CF 964 and 2021 CF 965. You're arrested for, in 964, you're arrested for charges of attempted uh, first degree murder with a firearm, shooting from a vehicle, driving um, from, from which a spot, a shot was fired. He was driving the vehicle, the shot was fired from. Shooting, in, shooting at or within a building, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, possession of ammunition by a convicted felon, possession by a violent career criminal, possession of a firearm by a violent career criminal, 
criminal mission of over a thousand dollars or more with a weapon, unlawful discharge of a firearm, and 965 is being charged with possession of cannabis with intent to sell and deliver. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. There's probable cause. Um, barely. Ms. Swanson, what are you asking that we do, Mr. Howard? Attorney Kennedy Swanson, on behalf of the Office of the State Attorney, we're asking the defendant to continue to be held at no bond as count one is a punishable by life felony. As to counts two through eight, um, we're leaving those bonds set as is. Sorry, yes, two through eight. No, two through nine. I apologize. Yes. As to the 2021 CF965 case, leaving that bond set as is, no contact with the victims or any co-defendants, no weapons, no firearms, no drugs, no alcohol or ammunition. As to the add-on bond in 2020 CT2346, we're asking that that bond be revoked. The defendant shouldn't have been driving. She doesn't have a valid license when this alleged incident was committed. Okay, now. Uh, Ms. George and Ms. Thompson. Your Honor, we have no argument. We reserve the right for Arthur Herring in the trial division. All right. With no objection from Ms. George, um, the court is going to stay the bond as count one and as to no bond. I want to stay the bonds as set 5000 as to count two. I think it's $150. Counts three through nine each. And then 2020, 20, sorry, 2021 CF 965, the court's gonna say the bond in the amount of $1,000, I believe. And then as to 2020 CT 2346 AO, the court's going to revoke that bond. We're gonna set that bond at none. We're gonna reserve Mr. Howard to have his heart in here in front of the division judge. Have a good day, sir. Right. All right. We have a verdict on Mr. Giles. Right here, you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tell me your name, sir. Roy Giles. Mr. Giles, you are here in 2021 CF 959 on a charge of fleeing, attempt to elude, license and sirens, um, no, no valid driver's license, and trespass on school grounds or facilities. Court did find probable cause for your arrest uh, for these charges. I'm going to stay your bonds and I'm going to set bond in account one in the amount of two thousand five hundred dollars. That's account two five hundred dollars. That's account three one hundred dollars. Addition of your bonds not to return to the school. No operating motor vehicle without a valid driver's license. I'm right. going to point the public defender to represent you in this case. Have a great day, sir. Thanks, sir. Before we get too deep into these felonies, um, do we get a word on Mr. Davenport? Is he coming, is he coming to court? Or are we... He's coming. Okay. All right, tell me your name, sir. Pierre Michael Louis Jacques. Say Luis, what's look? Pierre Michael Louis Jacques. Jacques, okay. Mr. Louis Jacques, you are here in 2021 CF 976 AO on a possession of <clears throat> a weapon or firearm by convicted felon, um, possession of uh, NDMA or ecstasy, and possession of amphetamines. The court did review the charging affidavit in this case. The court did find probable cause for your arrest as to that matter. The court's going to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. I want to 
state of bonds as set, 4,000 as a count one, 1,000 as a count two, 1,000 as a count three. It seems that you're out on bond in 2020 CF 3128AO. Of course, going to revoke that bond and set all your bonds at none. One point the public defender represent him in that case if they're not already representing him. As I well. have no bond, sir. Not as to the old case, to the new case you have bond, but as to the old case you don't have bond. You need to go have a bond here in front of your judge if they think that it's appropriate to let you out. Okay, so I just put a guy putting me for a bond hearing? Yep, you gotta talk to your attorneys, public defender's office. Who I talked to, I haven't spoken to my PD yet. Yeah, so I don't know who you, I don't know if you already had a PD from before, but that office represents you now. So oh, I gotta speak to my PD for my old case. Correct. But I got a, a bond on this new case. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me your name, sir. Is you there? It's Martin. Mr. Martin, you are here in 2021 CF 967AO on three counts and 2021 MM583 on one count. You're in 2021 CF 965AO. You're, you're, you're arrested for tampering with physical evidence, possession of cannabis with intent to sell, deliver, and possession of cannabis over 20 grams. As a count one, the court found probable cause of attempted tampering with physical evidence. Does anyone have any PC arguments other than that? No, yeah. Of course, going to set your bond as a count one in the amount of $500, as a count two, $1,000, as a count three, $1,000. In 2021, CF. 583, the court did review that charging affidavit, found probable cause for your arrest of trespass on property after warning. It's going to stay your bonds, I think, in the amount of $500. $500 in that case. Seems that you're out on bond in 2016, CF 15690, and 2015, CF 5462. And in those cases, the court's going to revoke your bonds as to those cases, it's going to set new bonds at none. I'm pointing public defender to represent you in all your cases. Uh, your Honor, um, I just I have a question in regards to those cases. Those are competency cases, yes. but I believe they're still closed. Can I check with the state to make sure? Closed is in this mist. Because they were reclosed, as it shows in the clerk of courts. Well, some clerks mark cases that are competency closed, but they're, they're not actually closed because they never actually dismiss the charges. They're just not active pretrial cases, trial cases. I don't have, I mean, they're open in our system yet. They haven't been closed. We just haven't had, they haven't had a pretty much a year since a status date. Um, Your Honor, so we would, act, state would advocate for no um, action on the out on bond with competency issues. Is, do you have a competency status date set or? The last one I see in our system was in May, in April of last year on both the cases. It looks like they're in the same division. So there was a new competency status date set or new hearing set? The last one is in April of 2020 was the last date I see in our system for and, a date. Yeah, and then that one was canceled, but they haven't put a new date in the system as of yet. So it's just white. Whose division is this? Division 22, just a block. There is some kind of court filing happened in November. Um, let's see. Confidential court filing in November. All right. He has the public defender's office in that case, in those cases, I should say. Of course, because based on that's a, a, these are all the same. It looks like they posted, they gave the court his updated aspire as of November 2020 information. All right. Of course, going to still revoke his bonds. Those are the cases set up at none. Standard condition of most pre-trial traditional release plans is that he's not supposed to possess any drugs or alcohol without a valid prescription. 
So I believe he's in violation of those conditional lease plans. The point of public defender represent him in all his cases if they are not already representing him. Going. Okay. So, sir, you got, you got to speak with your attorneys. Just talk to you, talk to them in the hallway. Good morning. Tell me your name, sir. Tell me your name. Arithian McLeod, for the record. Right. Mr. McLeod, you are here in 2021 CF 975AO on charge of aggravated battery. Court reviewed the charging affidavit in this case to define probable cause for your arrest. You want to stay your bonds in amount of $3,500. Additionally, your bonds do not return to the scene of this incident. To have no contact with any victims or witnesses. I have a question. So oh, hold, wait, don't ask me any questions. I'm point the public defender represents you. Ask Ms. George a question first, and then you can talk to them. Conditioning of bonds, not possessing weapons or firearms, any weapons or firearms need to be turned over to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. You were out on bond in 2020 MM 9061 AO. Of course, going to revoke that bond. I'm going to set a new bond as to each count um, $2,000 as to count one and $1,000 as to count two of that case. It's, it's, Those right. pieces are still active, correct? Mm -hmm. Those pieces are still active. So. All right. All right, sir, tell me your name. Daniel Robinson. Mr. Robinson, you're here in 2021 CF 972AO. Uh, we charge the possession of a controlled substance, and you're here in 2021 MM 571 AO on charge of trespass after warning. Of course, I uh, reviewed the charging affidavits in both cases and found probable cause for your arrest. I'm going to point the public defender to represent you in this case. I want to stay your bonds in the amount of $1,000, I believe, as, the, as the, the felony case, 2021 CF 972 AO. And 2021 CF7571 at $500. Addition of the bond that you do not possess any drugs or alcohol without a valid prescription and not to return to the scene of this location. You're out on bond at 2020 CF15092 AO. The court is going to revoke that bond or set new bonds at none. So, so what's the total bond amount now? You have a point of public defender representation in all your cases. You got to talk to your bonds. You got to talk to the public defender and get you in front of the judge for your circuit case. Oh, I got to have a new bond, bond set for the old case? Yes, sir. You got to get 
front of that judge. Okay, thank you. Tell me your name, ma'am. Ladaria Thompson. Ms. Thompson, you are here in 2021 CF 963AO on charge of fleeing an attempt to elude law enforcement. Court is going to put you on straight pre-trial release. Condition of your pre-trial release that you do not operate a motor vehicle without a valid driver's license, that you do not possess any weapons or firearms, any weapons or firearms you have need to be turned over to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. Is it? I'm appointing the public defender to represent you in this matter. Have a great day, ma'am. How you doing, sir? Tell me your name, sir. David Nicholas Williams. Mr. Williams, you are here in 2021 CF 968AO on charge of possession of MDMA or ecstasy. And you're also here on charge of trespassing the occupied structure. So is it? it, it uh -huh. Final probable cause for your arrest as to those charges is going to stay your bonds in the amount of $1,000 and $150. I'm going to appoint a public defender to represent you in this case. Is there any way I could plead Ms. out? Swanson, in the felony case, the, he's out on bond on 2020 CF 13733. Is that case filed? Attorney Kennedy Swanson, on behalf of the Office of State Attorney, no, Your Honor, that has not been filed on. It's a November 16th arrest. Mr. Williams, I'm not going to take any action on your 22 Higgins trial on bond on. Stay out of trouble. You understand? Uh, is, it, is, it, is it any way I could plead out to the Mr. Mint on this? No, sir. All right, thanks. All right, sir, tell me your name. Rodney Ziegler. Mr. Ziegler, you are here in 2021 CF 966 AO on charge of aggravated battery. And your honor, them people oh, been oh, following oh, me. Hey, Hold hey, on. Hey, hey, They've been following me since I've been home. I ain't done nothing. I want to appoint a public defender to represent Mr. Ziegler. You all want to try to bring him back, or you want to? No, yeah. No, you are. Not. So I point it. So I, so I asked him to talk to Mr. Tom. I appointed public defender representing Mr. Sigler. Do you want to oh. wave the remainder of his we'll, initial appearance? We'll wave, Your Honor. The court did find probable cause for his arrest in this case. He is uh, he is out on condition release at this time from the Department of Corrections on the charge of aggravated battery. The court's going to set his bond in the amount of twenty thousand dollars. Condition of his bond that he's had no contact with the victim, not returned to the location where this happened. All right. This is case 2019 CF 56577 AO. Mr. Reynolds, I'm appointing the public defender to represent him in this case. We'll wave, Your Honor. Mr. Reynolds is here on a, a violation of probation warrant. The judge signed that warrant, said his bond is none, his bond remained in none.
Do y'all have a failure to appear? Or just the BOP? It's for the same case. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> Oh, it is? Okay. It, I mean, I, 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 I was confused about that. I thought it was just... I wasn't going to address it because it's like the double warrant thing. Because <laughs> he has a warrant for... I have a warrant in my hand for violation of probation. He already had a warrant for his arrest on failing to appear. So I don't know... So you're just gonna you're gonna leave the warrants for the no, FTA at no bond? I'll leave them at no bond. Yeah. I just haven't seen the old double warrant in a long time. All right, sir. Tell me your name. State your name. Uh, Michael Trevisall. Mm -hmm. Trevisall, you are here in an out of county case from Broward County. The judge in that case set your bond at none. Your bond remained at none on the violation of probation. And we'll get you down to Broward County as soon as possible. I appoint a public defender to represent you while you're in our custody. All right, have a great day, sir. And can you advise him of his reporting oh, requirements, Aaron? Also, I forgot, Mr. Um, Mr. Travels, all you are a violent felony participant or a special concern. Uh, you're not going to be entitled to release until after your case is, your VOP is resolved. Uh, when you are released, you will have 48 hours to report. The, the sheriff's office and be registered as a sexual offender or sexual predator. Okay. I don't know. And is it Mr. Davenport? Yes, sir. All right, can you tell me your name, sir? Excuse me, sir. Tell me your name. Alan Davenport. All right. Sir, you're here in 2000. 21 mm 559 AO on charge of possession of um, drug paraphernalia and petty theft. Ms. Swanson, was that offered to resolve Mr. Davenport's case? Attorney Kennedy Swanson, on behalf of the Office of State Attorney, the offer is adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, no return to any Walmart. Yeah, Mr. Davenport, is that an offer you want to accept? Um, no, we didn't have, we didn't have a face sheet for him. I didn't have a face sheet. He was a reset, but... Well, the public defender is always appointed in this case, so... It's from yesterday. Mr. Thompson, can you have us speak with your client? Yeah. And states conveyed an offer that was conveyed yesterday when it was reset. Yeah. Client would like to accept the state's offer and enter a plea of no contest. Mr. Davenport, can you raise your right hand and be sworn in? Yes, sir. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, help you got? Yes, sir. You put your hand down, sir. Tell me your name one more time. Alan Davenport. Mr. Davenport, you are here in 2021, MM 559 AO. In count one, you'd be in charge of possession of drug paraphernalia. That's a first degree misdemeanor. It's punishable by one year in the county jail and a thousand dollar fine. Count two is petty theft. That is a second degree misdemeanor, punishable by 60 days in the county jail and a $500 fine. It's my understanding that you'd like to enter a plea of no contest to those charges. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You understand by pleading no contest to those charges, you give it the right to have a jury trial in this case. You're giving up certain rights. You gotta, you give, when you get a plea in a case, you give up certain constitutional rights. One of them is to a jury trial. You know what I'm saying? Give up that right. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Give up the right to have Mr. Thompson or Ms. George represent you at that trial as your attorneys. Yes, sir. At that trial, they can challenge the state's evidence. They can question the state's witnesses and call witnesses on your behalf. You understand that? Yes, sir. 
if there was a witness that you wanted to call that did not want to come to court, do you understand that the court can use the subpoena power to make that witness appear? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol at this time? No, sir. Do you understand you're given the right to appeal any errors in this case except the right, the court's jurisdiction over you and the legal legality of the sentence that I'm going to impose? Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Do you understand that this plea that you're entering can be used to enhance a later crime if you're found guilty of the same offense? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Have you now or in the past been diagnosed with a mental health illness? Yes, sir. What was that mental health illness? Uh, depression and, uh, I actually, sir, I don't know the exact, uh, diagnosis from right. which well, I Well, do you take any given? medications for those mental health illnesses? Yes, sir. Do those medications help you understand the world around you? They did when I was smart enough to take them on time. Okay. Are you suffering from any of the symptoms of your mental health illnesses right now? Uh, I can't tell, Judge. Um, I'm, a, I'm a former vet. I was taking a lot of pills when I was in the military, so. Well, I'm more concerned about what's, your, what's going on with you today. So right no, now, um, how are you feeling? Do you understand? No, I'm, I'm feeling fine, sir. All right. You know who our president is? Yes. All right. <laughs> All right. Where are you right now? I'm in court, sir. All right. <clears throat> you understand if you're not a United States citizen, any of this plea could subject you to deportation. You understand that? Yes, sir. Has anybody forced, threatened, or coerced you to enter this plea? No, sir. All right. You understand? All right. I did review the charging affidavit in this case. I do find a factual basis for the entering of your plea. I'll accept your plea with no contest, sir, in this matter. I'll adjudicate you guilty of the charge. I'll impose court costs in this case amount of, and cost of prosecution amount of $273 plus a $50 public defender application fee and $50 public defender lien for a total of, for a total of $373. I'll give you one year to pay those costs directly in full. I'll give you credit for the three, three, days. Days, three days that you spent in the Orange County Jail on these cases. I ordered you not return to any Walmart. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You have 30 days from today's date to appeal your judgment sentence in writing. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. Have a great day, sir. Thank you. And I believe that was it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.